Welcome to Project Cargo Weekly, and this is yet another great interview in store for you today. And our special guest of honor is Mr. Samir Fagwen, the Managing Director of UAL Chartering in Denmark. First of all, very much welcome here, Samir. Thank you very much, Paul. It's a pleasure to, uh, to talk with you. Same, same here. And uh, as we just agreed uh, before we started the recording, uh, we never met, but now we finally meet and then it's online. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the life, but uh, that's, that's how that's how it goes. That's how it is, yeah. yeah. Right, uh, as as you know from previous in interviews and uh, which my viewers are now used to, I always start by letting the accused on the bench uh, <laughs> give a little explanation to uh, his background, his or her background, and in your case, uh, how did you end up uh, where you are now, and how did you start into shipping in the first place, please? Um. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. How how I ended up here? Well, um, I started um, my career. Uh, I had a, a small small stop at an agency in Copenhagen back in two thousand and seven, uh, and quickly realized that I wanted to involve myself within the actual business of shipping. So um, I started in two thousand eight as a trainee with Scantrans. Oh, yes. uh, and and uh, spent my my two years at the, the wonderful office in in Nesbitt. and, yes. and um, then I got the chance to move to Houston and continue my apprenticeship in in Houston, mm -hmm. uh, where I spent a year. And uh, after a year in Houston, uh, I was lucky enough to uh, uh, be offered a, a, a rollout uh, with our Asia team in in, uh, in Malaysia, where I stayed mm -hmm. for. Close to four, uh, three and a half years. Okay. Um, before uh, heading back to Denmark. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, deciding, uh, you know, I had my son. He was born in Malaysia, and, and you know, we, we decided that it was time to to, to go back to Denmark. And then, then I had a quick stop at Nodana, uh, okay. at the project division, uh, for a year, year and a half before mm -hmm. I just then ended up going back to. Which was formerly Scantrans, but ended up being Intermarine mm -hmm. uh, during the merger. I think that was in 2012. Intermarine uh, merged with uh, with Scantrans at the time. Correct. Yeah. And then Intermarine became Seamarine while I was uh, in Denmark. Um, and as a lot of people already know, that ended dramatically here uh, close to a year ago now. Um, so after. Uh, this uh, whole sea marine story. Um, my partner and I, Morten uh, Müller, who, is, who I actually got to know while we were working for Scantrans out in Malaysia, mm -hmm. um, got in contact with uh, UAL and we jointly started this uh, company called uh, UAL Chartering, which is an agency to the Universal Africa Lines with headquarters mm -hmm. in Rotterdam. Okay. So that's a quick, quick story about me and how I got involved in shipping. Okay, that, that's a pretty fantastic background you have. I mean, you've certainly been outside the Beltway and you've seen different continents around the world. I mean, that, 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 that's also what I suppose we, we do enjoy and love with this kind of business that is never boring, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> and how do you feel now, let's say, kind of having relocated back to Denmark? Do you feel good to be back in Scandinavia? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, when, when you've been around the world um you you, you do appreciate uh you know the order that we have <laughs> but also to you know that uh, we have some soft values here in denmark which which i really appreciate i mean i always give give people the example of, of you know having the strollers here here in denmark it's it's you know when you go to a cafe uh, or when when you used to go to cafes uh you could leave your stroll outside with with the babies in it I mean, and that's very, very unusual. Uh, you would never see that happen in, in, the, in the States or, you know, even south, uh, south of the border in, in Denmark. I mean, so, you know, these soft values is, is uh, I think, find them re really important. 
Yeah, no, I think you're right. I, I used to spend many years in China, and, and you're right. There are some things that you uh, you miss a lot when you are abroad. I especially missed uh, rubrød with spirals, uh, and I, I I cannot translate that for our English uh, viewers no. here, but it, it's some kind of Danish dry food. But anyway, oh, oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> exactly, that's how it is. Uh, what I'd like to, to ask you a little bit about, uh, tell me about the group uh, UAL, Universal Africa Line. Uh, as the name implies, uh, it means uh, from any where into Africa, doesn't it? Tell yeah. us about, about a little bit about the group. Uh, what, so, do you, so what do you do the there? Group, yeah. I mean, the, the shipping line has actually existed since, I might be wrong here, but if I remember correctly, since, uh, you know, the, the early 70s, 1973, okay. I believe uh, our CEO, from, uh, Mr. Youngblood, he, he formed the company. And ever since it's, it's developed into to this, and, and well-known liner service. So uh, it's, it's, it's shipments every second week from, from Antwerp and, uh, and Aberdeen down to West Africa. Okay. And that has been going on for, for many years now, including the service we have from Houston into West Africa. Okay. Um, and you can say that's the core business of UAL. That's been you know, the, the main business for, for many, many years. Right. running this line of service, um, servicing mainly oil and gas clients into West Africa. Okay. Um, and then on top of that, you know, th things have developed. Um, you know, UL has their own office, their own agency down in Nigeria. And, and, and Nigeria is a you know, very important market for UL. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, office in Houston as well, uh, in, in, in the UK. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, latest uh, addition to the team, you could say, is, is uh, uh, Morten and myself here in Denmark uh, for, um, you know, uh, for running an addition to the line of service. So you could say the UL chartering is um, an addition to, 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 to what UL already has. So uh, Morten and myself, we've been dealing uh, with as, as former sea marine uh, with both continent shipments and Mediterranean mm -hmm. shipments to West Africa. And okay. we've actually been competing against UL in the past. Um, mm -hmm. So now we're running the Mediterranean and Black uh, Sea service. Uh, mm -hmm. And recently we started this uh, service down to East Africa as well, okay. um, uh, which is pretty interesting. So, so that means, if, just to, to let me understand it correctly, also for our viewers around the world here. So you have uh, A, you have a line of service from uh, Northwest uh, Europe and uh, Houston into West Africa. Yes. You have a newly opened uh, line of service from Northwest Europe uh, in, uh, and the Met into East Africa, correct? Uh, yeah, well, for now it's from North West Europe into East Africa. Into East Africa. Okay. Yeah. And then you have a separate service uh, from the Med or, or is that more on chartering? Uh, basis? It's, it's, I mean, we've started out on an opportunity basis. So All right. they, we, now we've been at it for, uh, for nine months. We've had five sailings okay. uh, and yeah. working on the sixth one. Um, we have the UL clone as we speak right now, uh, right. Loaded down in Duras, Albania, uh, in okay. Adriatic. Um, so it's it's been on an opportunity basis. I wouldn't call it a, a you know a dedicated line of service. Right. Uh, so, but the aim is monthly sailings. Uh, that's what we've been used to more than myself. Um, yeah. Um, and, and it works. It works out. Okay. No, but it, it sounds like you have a pretty good coverage of the African continent. And I believe also, as I've heard from many others uh, recently around the world, that Africa is the last, uh, let's say, uh, kind of virgin uh, continent where, uh, where there, there's a lot of business to be had. Uh, but it is a complex area, you know, West Africa, East Africa, and you cover both. Yeah. Uh, regularly, the type of tonnage you have in service. Can, could you elaborate a little bit on that? The type of ships uh, yeah. they're, they're um, geared. Uh, so, yeah. so you know, they're all all geared vessels, um, okay. ranking from four thousand tonnes up to twelve thousand tonnes. Okay. Um, so these are the the vessels owned by UL. So, so the, the group owns seven multipurpose vessels, uh, okay. and then. In order to, uh, to to service all trade lanes, we we chartering tonnage uh, mainly on on, on uh, say shorter periods or, or trip charters. So 
So right now on the waters we have uh, 13 ships. Okay. Uh, and one of the charter ships is geared up to 800 tons. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, um, we are a small uh, ship owner. You could say, uh, but with uh, an only—I mean, our only focus is Africa. So, so we don't tramp around worldwide. So we right. don't need, a, you know, you could say, a fleet of, of twenty to thirty ships to, to service that. Um, so it's, it's a small, dedicated uh, ship owner. Understand, and uh, that means uh, with the Africa trade, as you mentioned yourself, Nigeria is an important point. And I noticed that you load in Aberdeen, and of course, immediately when you mention uh, Aberdeen and uh, Nigeria, then I think of oil and gas. And as yeah. you also said, it was the the, the origins. Uh, is the oil and gas industry still uh, relatively strong, or, or is it uh, a little bit down? And uh, renewable is taking over. Can you see any development? I mean, there's no doubt that renewables is 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 the new black. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. and that's what, what everyone is, is, is talking about but you could say the whole fundament of for instance our east africa service is oil and gas i mean right uh, you know there, there's there, there's no secret to, to to anyone that they found massive amount of nature gas in, in mozambique and that's you know the core of our uh, line of service going to mozambique now okay. so Oil and gas is, is, is still an important market, and it's it's you know um, it's still there. Yeah, uh, yeah. But no doubt that renewables is is uh, is the new black uh, moving mm. forward. Is coming, and that means for for your particular office uh, located in Denmark, uh, UAL chartering, so to speak. That that's. Do you also sell uh, to the customers your liner services, or, or do you focus mainly on chartering only? Uh, I mean, uh, yes. Yeah, so so being based in Denmark, you know, we also take on the, the role as 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 UL's agent in, okay. in Denmark or uh, in Scandinavia. Um, right. Um, so yeah, of course, you know, it's 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 not divided into only handling a specific no. trade obviously you know the, the whole as i mentioned i mean we're we a small group uh you know and then you, you know so everyone helps each other and yeah. we sell the service of, of the line of service and the black sea and the uh, east africa service as well so um uh, but yeah as for ul chartering you'd say we have several roles uh, so you know there's the we, we help out with east africa there's the mediterranean black sea right um there's the agency for denmark and then we also handle all in-house um tonnage uh for for the ul group so okay. let's say the line of service has overbookings in houston then you know they would call us and say listen can you find a ship in Houston going to West Africa? And, uh, right. So, 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 yeah. So, so, so you are the troubleshooter for for the liner service when they're let's say overbooked or or, or have some some uh, cargo in that they can't uh, offload on their own tonnage. That then they they get help from you. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, would it be fair to say, let, let's say I'm a project freight for water in, in Denmark, sitting in Aarhus, and I have a heavy lift project down to Pemba or <laughs> Mozambique, then mm -hmm. I could call you and you could Absolutely. quote, uh, then you could quote a rate on your line of service. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. That, that, that's very interesting. And you also regularly send out uh, sailing schedules and... Uh, yeah, we do that uh, on a weekly basis, and okay. of course, we, we try to promote ourselves uh, okay. on on social medias as well. And, okay. and do do you uh, does does your ships also accept containers? Uh, you don't have containers in your fleet, I suppose, but you take ships yeah, on we, containers. We have uh, we have line on containers from ah, okay. you know um, from our service to, to West Africa again. I mean, this is is a, 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 you know a line of service that's been existing for for plus 40 years so right um, you know we have all the, you know the necessary means to, to run a line of service uh, understand i mean there's no cargoes too small to be shipped uh, on a line of service and that includes you know uh, if you if you're in the need for containers then you can then you have it yeah uh, even, and even you know say in you know inland trucking i mean we do have a lot of clients who have bits and pieces you know, right. being, being trucked from inland in Europe or in US. And so, yeah. You, you can help with that. Uh, your service out of the US, is that uh, also on a regular basis into West Africa? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, would you say every fortnight or, or once a month? That's, or? I would say every third week. Every third week. Uh, 
I mean, things do get pushed uh, up a bit. I mean, we've you know also come close to to shipments every second week uh, from Houston, but I would say in average every third week out of Houston. Okay. Um, and the ports of call, uh, if you mentioned the ports of call in West Africa, the main ports in Nigeria, or could you elaborate? Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, I would say we cover, you know, the whole coast of West Africa down to Angola. Um, uh, but yeah, Nigeria and Angola um, are, you know, pretty big for us. And then, of yeah. course, we have uh, UAL owns their own terminal in Equatorial Guinea uh, called K5 Terminal in Malabo. Okay. Which, is, of course, it's a, it's a huge hub for us um, and our clients. Um, we recently did. Uh, I mean, we have a lot of major oil and gas companies who, who rent space on this uh, terminal down in Malibu. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. And, of course, whenever we can, uh, you know, we, we, we try to support on the shipping part as well. Of but course. we also have competitors who come into our terminal and, and you okay. know, we service them as well. Okay. Uh, from the terminal. That uh, sounds like a, like a pretty good deal. <laughs> Seems like it. Uh, yeah. It's not really something I'm I'm involved in, but but it's it's a good selling point. I mean, and you know, we have clients who you know, uh, say for instance, on our newest app, service out of the Mediterranean and Black Sea, or even East Africa. You know, we can offer these services of saying, you know, even though it's bits and pieces, we can bring them in to the terminal. And transship them from there on yeah. to another ship, which is already inducing, you know, whatever port that the client is requesting, right? So yeah. it gives us, a, you know, a huge upper hand. I'll yeah, say. no, no, it gives you a lot of flexibility, and you, and you don't have to say outright no, we can't do it. It's that you can do it. So, so uh, and, and that's the mantra. I mean, for for Africa and and UL, uh, you know, it's the can do attitude. I mean, yeah. you know, you, no, but there, there's, there isn't the challenge that UL throughout the past 40 50 years hasn't been through uh, no 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 i i do i do uh, hear only good words about you around in the market and uh, you seem to have also the, the 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 size that makes you still agile i mean you can still move uh, you know yeah. you're, you're, you're not so big that you are unapproachable so to speak <laughs> no 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 i mean not at all um you could say you know we are the size that we need to be um, yeah um uh, of course, so you could say that the group in itself is expanding, but it's expanding in a way that makes sense. So, you know, adding on, for instance, more than myself was, you know, something that you all could see the need for. Uh, yeah. Also servicing, because, I mean, you say a lot of the clients, and especially in the oil and gas industry, is the same moving from, from you know, from Europe yeah. or from, from the Mediterranean. So they could see, the, you know, the need to expand uh, on that service and oh. looking past the, the you know looking you know on, on for the last eight, nine months it's it's you know it made sense uh, yeah yeah I, I understand that the office in Copenhagen is relatively new and it is. Uh, when, when what date did you start actually uh, we started uh, in May uh, May last year. Uh, <laughs> okay. less than so, a year uh, close to a year now yeah nine months <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> ah, that's, it's, that's, that's it's pretty new yeah, and you you got up uh, got off to a good start. Uh, has has uh, the COVID uh, crisis and all this has that affected uh, your liftings uh, and your situation? No doubt that you know we were off to a rough start. Uh, I mean, yeah. you know, starting uh, you know a, a new service, selling a new service for, from from Mediterranean and Black Sea, and and you know and and from day one, you could say we we had to focus on developing East Africa. Yeah. Um, uh, it's it's been a tough start, but I mean we've not been as fragile as, for instance, you know, um, the airplane industry or you no. know, and, and and a lot of. Uh, it's been challenging in the terms of planning and yeah. Uh, yeah. and and how to to you know to schedule your voyages in terms of, of uh, having. You know the crew being in quarantine 14 days before entering yeah. certain ports and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that that's been challenging. Things have still been been you know sold and purchased yeah. and sellers and buyers. So there's still been been a need for for shipping, uh, yeah. but not in the same way as you know before COVID. So un un under understand a another let's say <laughs> disease or not call it disease, but another uh, scourge that you have. In Africa now, I speak particularly West Africa nowadays is piracy. 
Uh, yeah. I mean, it has escaped no one that in the Gulf of Guinea, uh, quite a few attacks uh, recently, and it seems uh, that these local governments uh, <laughs> are unable to, to do much about it. Uh, is that something that uh, affects your, do you have security guards on board your ships? Or how, how do you, you have? Yeah, you have? We, I mean, that's, that's a must. I mean, you know, it will be knock on wood, uh, you know, um, you know, we haven't suffered from, from, you know, piracy attacks or, or, anything to the likes, but of course we're also following the news and, and you know, on a yeah. daily basis and, and we say, um, we, we have our own office down in Nigeria, actually in, in, in one of the uh, higher risk areas of, of Port Harcourt in Nigeria. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and we, it's, it's something that we follow and, and uh, yeah, to answer your question, we, uh, we use we hire gunboats or uh, guards on board the ships oh, going in, in and out of, of that area, um, yeah. which is, is sadly uh, a must. Uh, yeah, these days. necessary. Yeah. yeah. Now it's it's uh, it's uh, my dad's a sea captain retired, and I, I remember in his young days uh, he he used to sail down to West Africa for for Tom. And there were also a period some many years ago when, when piracy, and now it's kind of has come up again. They, they don't speak yeah. much about the Horn of Africa at the moment. That, that's kind of died down, so to speak, but now it's- Yeah, uh, that, that's, that's true. And then it's, it's been, I mean, the piracy in itself has been existing, all, you know, always. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the, the, how they attack and, 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 and how often they attack is just yeah. escalating, and and of course, uh, these news spread uh, really, really fast. So, so it's yeah. it's you know, if something happens, you know, the second, then fifteen minutes later, everyone knows, which yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. Um, but that also makes a lot of people nervous, obviously. Uh, yeah, that, that that's true. There's some sometimes, uh, let's say, bad news sell better than good news. You know, <laughs> no, nobody wants to hear that you had a great day. But if you tell uh, people you had a bad day, then they want to hear all about it, isn't it? <laughs> 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 so, so it's it's. Uh, I I know what you mean. It's a problem, but it, we should also not exaggerate it, of course. But but good to hear that you're dealing with it and you take uh, precautions because uh, certainly it's on people's mind. Um, right. Uh, so basically, so so for Universal Africa. Line, and headquartered in in Rotterdam. It's it's a Dutch uh, Dutch owned. I mean, the owner yes. is, is from Holland. Yes, okay. yes, he is. Uh, and and um, do you have any further plans to expand uh, here in Scandinavia, or, or how do you do in countries where you don't have your own office? Let's say Finland, Norway, Sweden. Uh, if we talk about the Nordics, would you then have the local agents to to sell your services here, or, or do you? Well, um... For now, it's not been necessary. I mean, right. uh, you know, I think the the uh, you know, all the commercial guys within the group already, and including more than myself, we have a broad network of of, of clients for in Scandinavia and in other countries in Europe and and right. you know, for Americas as well. So, uh, yeah, we do have agencies around, uh, but for for uh, Scandinavia, that's mainly uh, UL Charting here in Denmark handling that. Okay. Part. Okay, and, uh, and obviously, before Mon and myself joined, you know, the group of UAL has a broad network uh, of, of clients as well, which we still continue serving. So, of, of course, uh, for some countries, yes, agents, uh, and and but for Scandinavia, it's it's us here in Denmark. Okay, got it. Uh, then, then uh, one of the final questions I'd like to have: Let's assume that there are two freight forwarders uh, coming to you with the same inquiry. Mm -hmm. um, how is your policy uh, towards freight forwarders? Because uh, many freight forwarders they follow this uh, this online video thing that I, I'm having. Yeah, well, uh, do you treat everybody the same? You would give the same rate to to anyone for the yeah, same absolutely. inquiry? And, absolutely. And I mean, so so that's you know, I think for for forwarders, I mean, they they got to be smart. So so you know, even though it's for the same project. Or you know, for the same destination, uh, we as, as as ship owners or carriers, we often see that you know they they do have different inquiries. Yeah. So um, you know, they, it might be a neighbor port or a neighbor country, or you know, it it there might be a change to the terms, and so. But if if two uh, forwarders come with the exact identical uh, inquiry, we would give them both 
you know, uh, forward us the chance to 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 book on our ship. Absolutely. Yeah. So let the best man win, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's it goes the same way when when you know they they spread their inquiries around to to us carriers, right? Um, yeah. They also give us the chance to, to bid on it. Uh, uh, the, the, the same the, terms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The the reason why I'm asking is, of course, that that you know things are evolving a little bit. Some container carriers now want to be forwarders. Even some big German forwarders have their own ships now. So it's uh, it's kind of blurred. It's not the traditional way anymore. No. Uh, so some ship owners even say to the customer, "Yeah, I can do your inland for you." So so uh, which was traditionally the forwarders uh, area, you know. Yeah. So uh, but yeah. but but that means you are open uh, to anyone and and you don't play any favorites so to speak. No, we don't. Uh, I mean we we uh, we see ourselves as, as you know so strong within Africa that we quite often and that could be you know even competitors. I mean we we do have a friendly, you know, quite good relationship with all our competitors, but and, and we do have even competitors and forwarders and, and whoever else who comes with us because we have such a strong knowledge about our trade. Um, so we actually, we see ourselves bringing a lot of value uh, yeah. when, when it comes to, to shipments to Africa. And, and we would, you know, gladly, uh, you know, um, share that knowledge with whoever one wants it. And, yeah. and so giving out same quotes, uh, for sure, but but if we can add any value to it, we do it. Okay, now that that's a very clear answer. No, I must say you are covering a very special market, uh, and also as I understand, with the recent development of Africa, they are now trying to make it into, is it one gigantic EU? Ho hopefully, with less bureaucracy, but <laughs> at least a, a kind of gigantic African trade union. Uh, and there seems to be a lot of focus on, on Africa. So. You have you have hopes that uh, your liftings and services might even be expanded. I mean, Africa is de is developing. It's on a on a roll, isn't it? It, it is, uh, and I would say, yeah, latest with our new service to, to East Africa. That's you know something that we we uh, we can see is expanding. Yeah, and and um, we, we are a bit proud of being the first line of service going directly into Mozambique on a, on a you know a, a, a straight sailing from Europe without transshipping oh, yeah. anywhere. So, which um, ports of call do you have in Mozambique? Uh, we do uh, Pemba, and then we go to uh, this uh, area where um, called uh, Cabo Delgado, where uh, you have this Afungi uh, um, port. Okay. Uh, area where where is it? Eventually, once you know the uh, MOF uh, is, is going to be built uh, right. at that area, that's where all all the, the cargo eventually is going to come. Okay, come so it's, it, it's 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 something about a very enormous, gigantic gas find, isn't it? Uh, or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I've noticed several forwarders uh, suddenly seem to be not in their office in Denmark anymore. They are now uh, suddenly in Mozambique for weeks on end. So <laughs> they're, 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 it's probably not only holiday. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. no. Oh, that's good. Okay, Samir, I, I must say uh, many, many uh, thanks to you formally. Uh, you've answered everything uh, that I could think of uh, clearly and transparently. And, and uh, I'm, I'm quite sure that, that our viewers here will have a good impression of, of uh, UAL. And uh, formally, I wish to thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. And to all our viewers, listeners, readers around the world, this was yet another great, in my own view, of course, uh, interview, uh, this time with a special guest, Mr. Samir Fergwen, uh, Managing Director of UAL Chartering in Denmark. Stay tuned for more interviews in the future. Thank you. Thank you.